Hello and welcome to part four of our Workspace in Depth for Shortcuts a Lot. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the tools. They're the uh, icons that are over on the left of the screen. There are 21 in total, each with its own unique properties and each very, very useful to us. So let's make a start. First one is our selection tool. Now this one is to select and manipulate objects placed on the mat, as you can see by the handy little pop-up window there. So let's start by getting us a basic shape on there. And we can see that currently there are little nodes and things around it. But if that's deselected at the moment with my selection tool selected, I just click on the object and those reappear there to help me resize, move, rotate, whatever I need to do. Very, very simple. If, however, I have a couple of designs on the mat, like so, and I want to select both, I could use this selection tool and drag a square around them. However, if there's another shape on the mat and I want to avoid it, I could now use my selection lasso. And what that allows me to do is click and drag an outline around the shapes that I want to select and there we can see I've selected the two that I wanted to select and omitted the other one. So that's a great little tool in itself. Next, we come on to the shape tool. This is to edit the nodes in an outline. Now I'm going to zoom in for this so I can zoom in using my view and zoom selection tool. And I'll just get rid of the library here. Now, if you position your pointer over an edge or a path of a shape, You'll see the cursor change to a little wiggly line. Click and you've now got access to edit these nodes and also the handles that deal with the curves. So what you would do is position your cursor over the node you want to uh, move or, or do something to. And again, you'll see the cursor change to the little crosshair. Click, hold and drag to do whatever you want to do, whether that be drag it or move it or however you want to deal with that. Again, with little uh, handles, the curve handle, bezier curve handles, whatever you want to call them. Click and drag, and we can start adapting a shape. Now, I can hover over another um, node, and it will change again. And if I hold the shift key and select, I can actually change two at one time. So I've got both selected here. Oops, pardon me. I'll go back, select, and then we can do that. So I can choose whichever um, handles I want to change. So I could even just do this like that. So that's the majority of our selection tools. I'll just delete that to get that out of the way. Oops, that was deleting the um, nodes. Go back to my selection tool, delete, and I'll go back to the full screen. Now we're looking at the text tools. So I've got the type to basic type tool selected here, and I've got my little cursor uh, showing me that I've selected the type tool. Now, if I click on the screen anywhere, I'll get my little flashing icon telling me that it's ready to accept my typing. So I'll just type in here, hello. Now I can select by clicking and dragging over that text and then change the font over in the properties pane on the right. And I can now use those, uh, use that font to be my um, design. I've just zoomed in again here just to show you a couple of extra bits over here on the properties panel. You can resize text based on inch measurements. It doesn't have to be points as you would normally expect. You've got alignment tools and obviously basic um, formatting as well. Width obviously changes the width of the letters themselves, so that creates one version of overlapping that will help us create a solid outline if we want it. Tracking is the space between the letters, so I can increase that or decrease that to help me out. Leading is the space between you know the layers, uh, the letters up and downwards, if that makes any sense. So, for example, if I uh, change these, that will make no difference at the moment because it's not superscript. I can offset something, though, make it superscript by doing this. So I can create different designs. If I've got a couple of letters selected, I can also rotate them to create another unique design. If I've got all of the letters selected, 
I can rotate them all in the same amount of degrees. Or I could potentially change the H 20 degrees to the right, the E 20 to the left, and repeat this all the way along so that I have some kind of higgledy piggledy lettering. So that's quite uh, an exciting little feature, I thought. And then I can also go back and change the tracking so that they overlap each other. It's quite good. But I think the E and the L are a bit too much. So if I increase those, that's just changing the space between those two letters. So we've got really what I would call ultimate versatility and creativity between all of the different um, properties of editing fonts and text. I'll delete that one and show you the next one. The next one is a vertical type tool. So again, I can click anywhere, type my phrase, and this now gives me my text running vertically. Uh, because I got the rotation on, it will uh, put them as that, but now I've got it straight. So let's again zoom in there. So we can see. Now the tracking still works as space between letters, so that will just bunch them up together. Uh, the leading doesn't really make a difference again in this situation. Vertical offset, again, not much difference. Width will again change the width of the letters. And size again works in much the same way. We can obviously change the um, left and right. Now left and right alignment will obviously adjust the alignment to the top and bottom in this situation. So that's vertical lettering. Now what I can do is use the next type tool and I'll just bring this shape up here a little bit and increase it in size because what I'm going to do is choose the type on path tool. So whatever shape I've got, I can click my text tool over that shape and I'm now ready to type around that shape. And that gives me uh, a wonderful little design uh, tool to create uh, sentiments to go around apertures perhaps. Tracking still works the same way, rotation still works the same way, um, width still works the same way, and also size. So all of those editing tools still work in exactly the same way as they did before, just on the path shape that we wanted. Now. The next and final text tool is Type on Arch. Now, I'll click and start ready, but I can see up here I've got extra um, options available to me. I've got the arch radius, so that's the radius of the circle, almost the invisible circle that I'd be using, a start angle, and the choice of outside or inside. So if I just type my phrase, you can see it's automatically putting things onto the uh, onto an arch. I can increase or decrease that to change how that appears. And I can change where that angle starts around the invisible circle. The other option we have here is inside or outside. So that's whether the top edge is going against that invisible circle or the bottom edge. So again, plenty of options to play with there. Now, the next tools we've got are to do with drawing. This one is um, a pen tool or draw tool to draw your own shapes on the mat. Uh, you've probably used this style of thing before. It's node to node. So I can click, single click and plot paths in this way. And as we see from the top of the screen, you either press enter or escape to finish off your line. We can go back in and start um, changing things or adding points or even creating brand new lines. If I wanted to, however, I could uh, start with the pen tool again. This time, instead of single clicking, I click and drag to create that Bezier curve uh, straight away without having to go back in and edit it. So I can almost create like a scallop design. You can see that I've created that scallop design. 
also looks like something else, but we won't talk about that. So deleting it. Moving on to the pencil tool. This is more a freehand thing. So you click and drag this to create your outline. Uh, we've got automatic smoothing here as well. So it will sort of try and guess where you will have been. You'll see some, uh, some of these wonky bits where my hand shakes. They'll smooth themselves out naturally. And you can change that setting as well to get a better result. Uh, the next one is a paintbrush tool. Now this one is very unusual. You've got the choice to change the size or, or whatever you want to do. Basically, if you click and drag and paint a line, it gives you an outline all the way around the outside. Very, very unusual, but quite a creative tool in itself. If you overlap another shape, it doesn't necessarily join it. You might have to go in and do that later. Now, while I've got these shapes here, uh, I'll show you something else, and that's the eraser tool. This is for erasing parts of the line. Again, we've got choices. We can have circle or square, and we can change the size, and we can keep closed paths. So what that means is if I erase over this line, you'll see currently, while I've got the mouse button held down, that shape is open. But when I release the mouse button, it will close off both of those shapes. So it will give us almost like a stenciled version of our previous line. If I change that, it leaves them open. So that's when you've got almost like an advent calendar door effect. There's options for you there. You can obviously use it to remove all sorts of bits of the design. Uh, so that's that one. Next one is basically drawing a, sh a basic shape or shapes. We've got choices though when it comes to this. We've got a rectangle here, straightforward, nice and simple. We can uh, change the exact dimensions over here in the properties pane if we wanted to and the exact position. We can nudge it around a bit as well and align it to other things, whether it be the page or other objects. Uh, the next one is a rounded rectangle and this time we have the option to change the corner radius. So we can make it as rounded or as unrounded as we want. It's kind of cool. Next one is the uh, circle. So if I just click and drag that as it is, it will give me oval options or, you know, just anything. Whereas if I hold down the shift key as I'm dragging, it will only ever give me an actual circle, which I think is very good because then we don't have to second guess it or change the dimensions later. Uh, the next option is triangle. So if I just click and drag that one, again, freehand, single click and drag, it's giving me all sorts of options. If I shift and drag, it will give me almost like an equilateral uh, type triangle. No other options there though. So it's just basically a basic three-sided shape. Next one is a polygon. This one goes from the center of the shape. So I'll just have to zoom up there a bit. And we can actually change the number of corners. So we can get from, you know, as low as four or five, all the way up to, you know, very many sided shapes. Next one down from that is the star. And again, this works from the center of the star. If I'm freehand, it just gives me that in any rotation I want. Uh, and I've got the choice to change the number of points on the star and also the inner radius, so how pointy that star will be, which I think is fantastic. And then the final one is the spiral, and this one's kind of cool because from the center, it will create a spiral. You can change various aspects of this though. So if I change this to five turns and a di divergence of two, we'll see what impact that has. Oh, quite cool. Not so different to the other one. There's just a few extra turns and bits and pieces like that. Let's change the inner radius and change the clockwise. Uh, and let's change that to 0.5. Just mugging about now, really. Oh, that gives us nothing. Oh, hang on. Wow. That gives us a lot. 
Well, there we go. So that gives us a lot more curl to our spiral. That was way too much. Uh, but we can change these and play around with them and see what results we get and build up from there. So they're the basic shapes that we can generate from that. Next up is a colour picker tool. Now I can't necessarily show you this right now because I haven't got anything on the screen. But if you ever need to colour match a few uh, shapes and you want to recolour them to match each other, you can use that. And there's also the option to add a gradient here. Uh, now I'm just going to add a basic shape again for the next tool, which is a cutting knife. And that's this uh, here. So with the knife, you can actually dissect a shape with straight lines. Now, you saw how that took away the inner um, colouring. That's because this shape is now two parts. So I sliced through an angle, and I've now got those two parts to play with or do something with. There's various handles, basic and advanced, but we can chuck around, but that's not a problem for me. Now I'll undo that to the stage where it's one shape again, so you can see it's now filled in again. This time I'm going to use the distort tool, and what this does is it gives me four handles in the corner in order for me to drag out or change or distort a particular shape. So by doing this, I've almost got a faux 3D effect. Quite useful, I think. I'll undo that again. Next, we've got the stencil bridge tool, and you can set the bridge to be the measurement you want it to be. Well, essentially, what this does is it gives us um, bridges between areas in our stencils. So say, for example, you've got the letter E on your mat. In fact, why don't we just put it there? Letter lowercase e. You can see that in that middle bit there, when you cut it out from something and want to use this as a stencil, that bit will just fall away. So we don't want that. So what this does is it gives us the option to add a bridge. And there we can see, now we would have that as a stencil shape. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, a couple more things to show you. Zooming, obviously, if we click and zoom, oh, we can zoom right in all the way up to 800%. We can zoom all the way out to the mat or to um, whatever is selected. So if we zoom in there, these are just very quick shortcuts to whatever we fancy. They're also accessible through, through the view menu, and we can zoom to other dimensions there. The ruler down here actually helps us um, measure something. So if we're designing something we want to be at a particular size, say for example this E. So from side to side, this E measures 3 inches. We can also get an idea of the angle we're at. And also the position on the mat. The final tool is this hand tool down here. Now while you're zoomed in, moving around, not easy because you've got the um, two scroll bars. But with the hand, I can just click and drag and move around and shove the whole thing around to get to where I need to be. Now, I think that pretty much concludes the tools uh, in-depth overview right now. Obviously, I will be using these more again in the future to complete some projects and show you more about shortcuts a lot. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I will see you in part five, where we're taking a look at the library. For more hints, tips, and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.